Hey everyone, Two Angry Frogs here, and as we quickly approach the August 26th release of The World Within, new players are joining and many players are returning to World of Warcraft after an extended break away from the game. So as a newer returning player, what can you do to get prepared for the launch of The World Within? What are the new and updated features to get familiar with that are being carried over to the new expansion? And does gearing really matter at this point? Stepping in right before a new expansion release can raise these questions and a lot more. Not to mention the sheer amount of content that is available almost two years into the current expansion and trying to determine what really matters. So let's tackle these questions and hopefully make things a little more clear. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you always know what we're up to next. Now, let's get into it. Whether you are planning to focus on a single main character or multiple characters in The War Within, the first thing to take care of is getting those characters to level 70. For now, there are a couple of ways to speed up leveling in Dragonflight. First are time walking weeks. If you do not mind running old content dungeons, this can provide a great leveling opportunity. We have two time walking weeks remaining before The War Within releases. July 16th to 23rd for Warlords of Draenor, which can be run by characters level 40 and up. And August 6th to 13th for Legion, available to characters level 45 and up. Time walking dungeons, like other instanced content, can be queued for in the group finder. And these can be completed in about half the time it takes to complete a current Dragonflight dungeon, so these are quick to run as well. Note that if these are not showing up in the group finder, make sure you are not in chromie time. You must be on the normal timeline to queue for time walking dungeons. Second is the Dark Moon Fair experience buff. This will be available July 7th to 13th and August 4th to the 10th and gives you a 10% bonus to experience and reputation gains. To get the buff, you just need to ride the carousel or the roller coaster at the Dark Moon Fair. Each costs one Dark Moon Fair ticket, which you can get from KT or Métis, who are near the carousel and roller coaster locations. The buff lasts one hour and can be renewed as long as the Dark Moon Fair is active. You might notice that Legion Time Walking and the Dark Moon Fair overlap in dates, so this will be a great time to get Time Walking experience with that extra 10% experience buff. After the War Within pre-patch releases, which is expected on or before July 30th, leveling goes into overdrive. With pre-patch release, the experience required to level will be significantly reduced. Leveling a character from level 10 to 70 during the pre-patch will require 55% less experience than what is required now. And it is especially good for level 60 characters as the experience required to level from 60 to 70 is reduced by over 75%. During the pre-patch, we also have Radiant Echoes events that can be used to not only level our characters, but also gear them. So what about Pandaria Remix? I personally would not recommend it for any character that you are planning to main in The War Within. First, Pandaria Remix can only be played on newly created characters on Remix Realms. So that eliminates any possibility of jumping in to level characters you already have on retail servers. Second, we know that our Remix characters will not be transferred to retail servers until August 19th. And when these characters are transferred, they are stripped of all Remix gear and items and equipped with basic level appropriate gear. In addition, we do not currently know if this gear will be upgradable or if it will be usable in the Revival Catalyst for converting to tier set gear. And finally, we do not currently have a date when the War Within pre-patch will end, but given early access to the expansion starts August 22nd, I think we can safely assume it will be prior to then. This would leave only two to three days at most to gear remix characters that have been transferred to retail. As far as new alt characters, Pandaria Remix can be a great option. Leveling an alt character to level 70 in Remix can be completed in a matter of hours, and with the introduction of Warbands in the War Within, it will be much easier to pass gear and currency to our alts and have them geared in a reasonable amount of time after the expansion launches. 
Now that we have our character at level 70, it's time to get them geared. So what are some good ways to grab gear over the next couple of months to prepare for the expansion? First is the weekly quest, The Last Hurrah, picked up from Therizal in Valdraken. There are three different quests with one of the three active each week that requires us to complete three world events to finish the quest. For example, Last Hurrah Dragon Isles requires us to complete a community feast, grand hunt, and siege of Dragonbane Keep. Completing each world event rewards a cache of storms containing a random veteran track piece of gear, and turning in the last hurrah quest rewards a cache of awakened storms containing a random piece of champion track gear. So completing the last hurrah quest for the week guarantees one champion track and three veteran track pieces of gear, not including any random gear rewards that you might receive while completing all of the events. Second is the weekly world boss. Defeating the active world boss rewards a cache of storms containing a random veteran track piece of gear, and you also have a random chance for a champion track piece of gear to drop. The world boss that is active for the week is determined by the Awakened Raid for the week. For example, if the Awakened Raid is a Mirdrasil, then the weekly world boss is Orostor in the Emerald Dream Zone. The third method of gearing is by obtaining antique bronze bullions. You can earn one bullion weekly on each character by defeating Awakened Raid bosses, and this can be completed at all raid levels from LFR to Mythic. The cap increases by one each week, and there is a catch-up in place to quickly get to the current limit. For example, I started gearing the Warlock recently, and I had not yet run through any raids. Three LFR runs netted me the catch-up of seven bullions, which I then used to purchase both best-in-slot trinkets and a best-in-slot ring. This is, in my opinion, the most important thing you can do to get gear prepared for the War Within. The trinkets that you buy from Awakened Vendors are the best available in Dragonflight and are very strong in the War Within all the way through level 80. That is, unless they are nerfed prior to expansion release, which is entirely possible. An additional benefit to this is that you have a chance to get a piece of gear for each Awakened Raid boss defeated, and this also fills slots in your Great Vault for picking a piece of gear after the weekly reset. Outside of the standard Dragonflight world and instanced content, we will also be able to gear characters during the War Within pre-patch. With the pre-patch, we will have Radiant Echoes events that rewards a new currency, Residual Memories. Residual memories can be used to purchase gear starting at 1 of 8 on the veteran track, which makes them upgradable to item level 489 with Awakened Whelpling Crests and item level 502 with Awakened Drake Quests. Purchasable gear includes necks, rings, and trinkets, which can provide a way to fill in any low-level item gear slots that you have not been able to replace with higher level gear. And finally, with all the gear we mentioned, you can also get your Season 4 tier set by converting the gear to tier using the Revival Catalyst. Although not required, tier sets will give your character a bit more boost going into the War Within due to the added tier set abilities. When we first enter Kaz Algar at level 70, gear rewarded for completing quests, world content, delves, and other activities starts at item levels in the low 400s. So gearing your character now is not necessarily required, but it does provide a few advantages if you go into the expansion at a higher item level. First, questing and world content are easier since you are out geared for the early content. Second, you jump into higher level instanced content earlier, such as delves. There is a marked difference between running a delve at tier 3 with low 400s versus 515 item level gear. Finally, you do not have to worry about finding gear to replace your current gear until you hit later levels. If you would like a deeper dive into the details of the Dragonflight gearing system, be sure to check out our Season 4 gearing guide in the link above. Regardless of how you choose to level and gear your characters, there are a few features that were introduced or updated in Dragonflight that are good to get familiar with now. These features are being carried over largely unchanged, so getting familiar with them now will help you get better prepared for the War Within. The first is Dragon Riding, or as it's called in the War Within, Sky Riding. To get started with Dragon Riding, after you hit level 60 and first enter the Dragon Isles, 
you will need to complete the first two chapters of the Dragonflight campaign in The Waking Shores. This includes the storylines The Dragon Scale Expedition and Dragons in Distress. At the end of the Dragons in Distress storyline, you will get a quest for the benefit of the Queen to meet Alex Straza at the Ruby Life Shrine. She will send you to talk to Lord Andestraz to learn the basics of dragon riding and obtain your first mount. Completing this should take about 30 minutes to an hour. Note that if you are playing with a boosted character, you may not see the starting quest in the Waking Shores. In this case, head back to Orgrimmar and board the airship that initially takes you to the Dragon Isles. You should then see the quest available when the airship approaches the Waking Shores. After unlocking Dragon Riding, you may want to collect the Dragon Glyphs that are located across the zones in the Dragon Isles, but this is not required for the War Within. In Dragonflight, Glyphs are used to fill out your Dragon Riding talent tree, opening new Dragon Riding skills, increasing Vigor, and increasing the rate at which Vigor recharges. There are 72 Glyphs in total to collect in the Dragon Isles, and we have a Wowhead link in the video description below that will show you where they are all located. So collecting glyphs now is great for the limited time we have left in Dragonflight, but for the War Within, abilities such as those that increase vigor will become available as you level. The Dragon Riding Talent Tree is being streamlined for the War Within, so there will be a lot less glyphs, 38 as of now, to collect across Khazalgar. But if Blizzard holds to their current plan, Sky Riding will be the only way to fast travel in the new expansion since regular flying is being locked behind a Pathfinder achievement. So getting familiar with how Dragon Riding and Dragon Riding Talents work now will help when we jump into the new content. Another feature being carried over to the War Within, mostly unchanged, is the Profession and Crafting system. We'll cover the high points here, but you can check out our Dragonflight Crafting video in the link above to get a deep dive into the crafting system. When it comes to professions and crafting, there really is not a lot to gain from completely leveling them at this point, but getting familiar with the crafting system now will get you better prepared for the new expansion. All profession trainers, including cooking and fishing secondary profession trainers, are located in the Waking Shores starting area, so you can pick up your professions at level 60 as soon as you arrive in the Dragon Isles. You can also pick up all professions in the Artisan's Market in Valdraken, the Dragon Isles capital city. The crafting interface was completely overhauled for Dragonflight, so this will look a lot different to returning players. The largest change is that both gathering and crafting professions now have specializations. Each specialization has its own tree, and you build these up by spending knowledge points in the trees and nodes that you choose. Another major change to both gathering and crafting professions is the idea of quality. Gathering professions have three successive quality ranks, and crafting professions have five. The quality of materials or crafted items is affected by your skill, specializations, secondary stats, and in the case of crafting, the quality of materials and reagents used to craft the item. Professions now also have secondary stats in addition to the typical skill points. Secondary stats are used to increase the amount of materials you gather or items you craft, reduce the amount of materials required for crafting, and so on. There are four secondary stats for crafting professions and three for gathering professions. These are gained through filling out your specialization trees and can also be provided through profession gear, a new type of gear that can be equipped to improve certain aspects of your gathering and crafting. Finally, Dragonflight Crafting introduced embellishments. These are unique equipped abilities that are on crafted gear or can be added to crafted gear and weapons. One change that will be coming to professions in the War Within is the removal of the secondary stat inspiration, and this is being replaced with a new resource, Concentration. We will be able to use Concentration to guarantee that a craft is empowered, reaching the next highest level of quality. This will eliminate the random nature that we have for inspiration. We will, of course, be starting professions from scratch in the new expansion, which is not unlike how professions have worked in the past. So specialization trees will be new and any knowledge points collected in Dragonflight will not be usable in the new expansion. 
Another feature that we will see again is talent trees. These were completely overhauled for Dragonflight with the intention to provide more options for how to build your character. Instead of getting a new ability every couple of levels, characters have a limited number of baseline abilities and then you determine what additional abilities you want for your character by selecting specific talents. The talent tree interface as we see it now in Dragonflight will have very minimal change going into the War Within. So as with other features we have mentioned, it is worth spending some time getting familiar with how talent trees work and how to create, import, and export talent tree loadouts. For talent trees in the War Within, we will still have 31 talent points to spend in the class tree and 30 talent points to spend in the specialization tree. The basic requirements for talent trees remain the same as well. The one major change we will see in The War Within is the addition of hero talents. Creating, deleting, importing, and exporting talent trees will work the same, but we will be able to create more talent tree loadouts. The number of loadouts available will be increased from 10 to 40. And honestly, if I ever have 40 loadouts, I personally am spending way too much time min-maxing talent trees. Finally, a new feature, Edit Mode, was introduced to provide more control over the user interface. Although not as functional as something like LVUI, Edit Mode provides enough control over user interface components to satisfy what most players would need. And it doesn't require us to use a third-party add-on to achieve much of the same result. You get to Edit Mode through the WoW main menu, and when selected, you can see all of the user interface components that can be adjusted. What adjustments you can make, such as resizing or hiding and displaying, are dependent on the component selected. You can set up the user interface to be common across all of your characters or unique to each one, and you can save multiple interface settings for different situations. For example, I have setups for both my desktop PC and laptop due to the different screen sizes. So depending on the system I'm currently logged into, I can change the interface by simply selecting the proper reset. The important thing here in preparation for the War Within is setting up your user interface in the way that works best for you and then exporting the interface for import later if needed. Once you have your interface set up, you can use the edit mode export function to export a string that contains all of the user interface settings. At any point after, this string can then be imported within edit mode and your interface will be restored to those settings. There are many things you can do now and systems to become familiar with to be better prepared for diving into the War Within when it releases August 26th. We've covered what we believe are the key areas, but let us know what you think. Are there other areas that you believe should be covered and viewers should know about? Are there areas that you still have a lot of questions about or are struggling with? Let us know in the comments and everyone have a great day.